Hey, hi, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and I am finally going to say my best books of 2023. I have, I plan to put this out sooner and then I kind of just, mm, I felt, I know people can relate to this. You know, the whole concept of being perceived and like not wanting to be perceived. I've been really in that right now where I'm like, I just want to exist, but I don't want people to be aware of my existence. I want to be a nobody just who lays in my bed. I don't want people to see me, perceive me, you know, watch me, have thoughts about me. That's kind of the idea. And so I've been struggling to get in front of a camera. And also I just don't feel good about, I mean, do I ever feel good about myself? But it's been like extra bad. So it's taken a while for me to get here. So apologies that this is late, but also, I didn't have this amazing reading year last year. So I was like, nah, normally I would do a best and worst, but I don't have enough to do that. So I'm gonna do my best, which is seven or eight books. And then at the end, I'm just gonna include a couple of books that were disappointing because most books, if they were going to be terrible, they were DNF'd. And then there is one that's where I'll just mention at the end, the books that I didn't, that, that, that were the worst. It's just not worth it to make it its own video and give myself something else to edit. Let's be real. Okay. So without further ado, let's do it. Okay. So these are in no particular order. And if I don't have a lot to say about them, it's because my brain can only hold on to so much information. Okay. So <laughs> if there's a separate video about them, which I do have a couple, um, on here that have their own individual video. I will link that if you would like more details. So I'm going, I basically looked at what I read. So this is going to go from most recent to, you know, towards the beginning of 2023. So I have Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. This was recommended to me after I was asking my friend about some more Sad Girl Lit Fic. And why this is not the exact same as Ripe. There's still some underlying similarities, but in this one, our main character is I believe a Chinese immigrant. Her parents came from China and she moved to New York. She went to like this, um, what's it called? Why do I wanna call it a reformatory? Basically like a music school. And she became like really well known and was, you know, um, basically expected to become you know, like the best of her time, you know, most accomplished pianist at a young age. But we meet her as she is working at a restaurant. And so, and then she gets an offer from this business that's like a beauty business. Think of like, what are those like derm, like those med spas where you can get like facials, but also Botox, stuff like that. And so you're kind of like waiting to figure out what happened. And so you get little parts about her thinking about um, memories with her parents and the struggles growing up as a child of an immigrant and someone who didn't come from wealth. And even though I'm not the child of an immigrant, the parts with growing up, you know, poor with struggling parents who couldn't afford to buy you all of these things, very relatable. And also, you know, being, uh, thinking that you have all this promise or having all of this promise and have all these expectations, they're gonna do all these great things and then maybe not living up to that, relatable. <laughs> so it gets weirder and weirder. There is body horror in this. So if you don't like that, I would not recommend you read it, but you see her and dealing with her roommates and dealing with this business. And like, there's something, there's something going on with this business, but like it's gotten her more money. It's getting her this like, proximity to conventional beauty and she's like meeting these different people and there's someone like she's really enamored with and so you just see as it goes like things are starting to get weird and working at the spa they have to take all of these supplements and all of this stuff and it's just weird and I loved it um I don't I didn't connect to it as much as I did ripe just because there were different things but I still how excuse me powered through it and i was like wow this is amazing so body horror lit thick recommend then on to ripe by sarah rose edder this is one i have an individual review for i love this one i still think about it it is so relatable as a millennial um working in a job they hate 
suffering under capitalism. If you want to read something like that, I mean, heavy on the existential dread, but very accurate to me depictions of having to work through or work and you know continue on normal life when you have depression so just be you know careful that that it that is really very blatant there's no like if ands or buts about it. it is very much talking about depression but it is so good like it is so good in that video i share some of my favorite quotes that really hit me in the chest so i would check out that video it's non-spoilery um to see if you would want to read it but it was definitely one of my favorites I have Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. This should be no surprise. I think I have a special edition here. But I love this author. Um, she wrote the David Bond trilogy, which is one of my favorite series. And this is the beginning to a new series, which <laughs> I want to know when the next book is coming out. Shannon! But this one, what I love so much about this one is our main character is older. Um, Amina is in her 40s and has basically been out of the game she was a pirate but circumstances have pulled her back into working and she's got to reunite her old crew and get on the high seas and they gotta do some shit and I have a separate video about this one too so good love all the characters because you know I love some found family I love seeing older characters um I always love different religions and mythologies and this character is Muslim um and also the magic that we get in here because of that um like the religion and their own myths so you know jinn and different things like that and then also the places that they visit in here the descriptions were excellent because shannon's writing is amazing but also what we get at the end you may be reading it and thinking oh i know the normal beats of a fantasy so i know how this is gonna go and then shannon's like <laughs> you thought and then you're like oh, so you should read it and again you can watch my video it's non-spoilery if you want to know more about how I felt about that book I have <clears throat> I started Spy Family this year but I put Spy Family volume 6 on here as my favorite that is the latest one that I've read and the one I felt like like they've all been really good but this one really was like I don't know I felt like even more fleshed out here's my thing with manga is I know that they're volumes so one is not gonna be like a complete story it may kind of be just like a chapter but sometimes they feel too short to me and like I know that's the point so I don't I'm not trying to hate on manga because I just started the, the, this year and I've had a fun time with the majority of the ones that I've read but I feel like why I like Spy Family more than the others I've tried is because I feel like there's more of a complete story in each volume and, and volume six just hit so good and I need to continue. And I don't know if it's finished. Again, I'm new to the manga world, so I don't know if it's finished. I know there's more volumes, but I just really loved volume six and I need to try the anime. Um, but Spy Family is, I feel like everyone knows what Spy Family is, but we have our main character who is a spy and his newest assignment that we join him on, he ha he needs a family. It's like a long game. So he needs a wife and a daughter and he gets those, but they're not as they seem. And they're all hiding things from each other. It's amazing. Then I have Hostile Takeover by Christina C. Jones. This was a romance and it was so good. The main characters, she, her family owns like a black owned grocery business. And then he, his family um, owns like a big chain. Like their, hers is like local and theirs is like a big chain and wants to come and buy out smaller businesses. And so there's some family mess that's happening um, like with her dad and with their, on their board. And then she finds out that they're being bought out because of something her dad did. And like basically like a marriage alliance. So she's like forced, it's a forced marriage. Um, but then of course they're gonna fall for each other. And I just was like, the whole time just like, mm, you're not so mad girl. Cause they're just so angry at each other in the beginning, especially her cause she is pissed, which she has every right to be. But then she's like slowly uncovering. Obviously they're getting to know each other and get comfortable with each other, but also finding out about the dirty shit her dad did. It's good. Oh, you need to read it. 
Then I have The Crown Tower by Michael J. Sullivan. So this is the prequel series to the Ryria. I feel like I always say that wrong. I think I do. Revelations. And I read the first two, but the first one, it just, maybe because I've been gone so long from these boys, Hadrian and Royce, but it just, I just was like, my babies. And because in Ryeria, they've already been working together for a while, but in the Crown Tower, we're seeing them how they come together to become partners. And it was amazing. <laughs> and I need to finish, I need to keep reading, but like, oh, I love them so much. So anyway, you can read them in any order you want. I feel like I read on his website once that he recommends in publishing order, which would be the Ryeria Revelations, Ryeria Chronicles, The Age of Myth, and then this new one that came out. I cannot remember what that series is titled. And so I've read Ryeria, now I'm on Chronicles. And I'm like, if I can finish Chronicles, then I can go to Age of Myth, and then I can go to the new one. I'm always gonna be behind because that's me. But anyway, you could read them in chronological order or publishing order. Did I say that earlier? I might have said the wrong thing. Oh well, do what you want. A Last Away by Darcy Little Badger. I feel like this felt like I read this two years ago. Wow, last year was long and short at the same time. So this is a story about an indigenous author and I loved, what I loved about this one was the family dynamic because with a young adult book, you do not always have parents. <laughs> they're either just completely absent or they're dead. But she had both of her parents and I love the relationship that she had with them. There was like, they're very loving and caring and friendly with her, but still had boundaries. I love the platonic relationship she had with her male best friend. And the, cause it's like a mystery, what do you call it a mystery? thriller the mystery aspect of it mixing in with like indigenous traditions and like myth it just it worked well also physically the book is just high quality great paper great structure great binding so yeah <laughs> really great um, and then yellow face of course by R. Kuang. now while this was not my favorite favorite it's left an impression on me because it's Rebecca, duh. But like, June, I just, it just, it just hit, it just was so, you know, it just felt so, yeah, realistic. That would happen. That's probably happened. I believe it. I hate June so much. I don't know what else to say besides I hate June so much. I have a video with this one. Also has a review for book lovers on there. But um, yeah, I still have complex feelings about it, but it stuck with me this entire time. So like it had to be on this list because I, I think about it. And God, I hated June. Wow, being in her head was wild. And I will put on here with an asterisk, fourth wing, cause I'd be lying if I said that I did not enjoy this book. Will I reread it? Probably not, because I don't want to ruin it. But the time when I read it, the mood I was in, that was exactly what I needed. I was eating it up. I love the dragons. I was love, living for the angsty romance. Um, and plot holes, what plot holes? I didn't see them, right? Like I just read it and was having a ball. I was having a good old time. I always wanted to pick it back up. Loved it. Now, the second one, Iron Flame, I DNF'd. And if I went back into Fourth Wing, I might see all those plot holes and things. So I'm just gonna keep it in my mind as a wonderful little book I read back and whenever it came out. I mean, that's that. And so on that note of things that were the worst things this year, well, I will say um, Iron Flame. I didn't finish it, but I was, one thing I will say is I was listening to the audiobook, which was a terrible decision. That is something you need to read with your eyeballs because the narrator is not great, especially for the male and the dragon voices. No, thank you. But yeah, I DNF that. Also, I can't believe that this is the same year that I read House of Earth and Blood by Sarah Janet. Terrible. So long and for what? Horrible, horrendous, boring. I just found nothing between the two of those characters. I found no, I, no, I, I didn't believe there was chemistry there. I thought the story was just dumb and she just threw in everything that she could fantasy creatures and I just was not I was not feeling it I have a video about that book wow I didn't read much but I do <laughs> I've got videos about these books spare 
I know that's terrible to say a memoir was on my worst reads of the year, but it just was. There was just so much that was lacking, so much more that he needs to interrogate and work through. Um, but I know timing, this is probably the time for him to put out a memoir, even though I feel like any time that he would put it out, it would sell well, but whatever. I have a video about that one as well if you want to know more of my thoughts because that was at the beginning of the year. I don't remember that that well. Um, and I think besides those, the other thing that I didn't like the most would be we had to remove this post. I saw this in a bookstore and I just thought it looked interesting and sounded interesting and it started off really strong. Um, I don't remember much about it, but it just like was very short, but it just it had potential to be a really unique like weird hard hitting piece and it just bleh, you know they didn't they had a great idea but they didn't flush it out well so it was very bleh. um and then also where sleeping girls lie by farida abike iamide the author of ace of spades i was hoping that maybe this one would work better for me and in the beginning i was really into it and then it just felt too long and drawn out and then i just kind of was like ready for it to be finished. This one is uh, set at a, at a boarding school and the, something happens to our main character's roommate. And so then <sighs> there's issues and I don't know, I just, I didn't love it. I didn't love it, but I hope other people do. But those are um, for the most part. And then there is a book on here that I won't mention because of the St. Martin's Press boycott. Not on my worst, it would be on my best. Um, but I really did love that book so that's it for me my reading again was I did have some hitters some bangers but it wasn't my best year so I'm hoping this year is way better I'm already off to a great start already had a five-star read uh -huh. who is she so let's keep up that energy um yeah so tell me below one of your best books of 2023 and one of your worst books of 2023 yeah, and I think that's it. So thanks for watching. Stay blessed, hydrated, and moisturize the sunscreen. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <clears throat> hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, and am I shiny enough? <laughs> hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back. Um, what?